All right, so last time we talked about user namespaces. We went over the why and the what. Why are those, why is that isolation capability valuable? We talked about how to turn it on. We ran a container and showed how we can tell if, if our container is isolated using user namespaces. But I promised that next time we would talk about some of the gotchas, some of the kernel restrictions, and some of the things that are continuing to be worked on in user namespaces, even in the Linux kernel community, that should improve the capability and the ability to use it in a user-friendly way in the future. So first, in the earlier video, we talked about how we have this different Docker root directory when we have user namespaces enabled. And if I were to use the user NS remap flag and point it to, to another user, which even used a, another potential range, we would get another Docker root directory. So you could see that if we continue to change the user namespace mappings we were using, we would continue to kind of grow this set of image repositories that are all separate. In one sense, it's not that different from maybe you've changed your graph driver in the Docker engine and changed from overlay to AUFS. The same concepts apply there. There's a new root directory. The same images you had on one are not available on the other. But in the user namespace case, what we'd like to have in the future is the ability to have one set of shared layers that are all owned sort of zero based so real root owns most of the files and if your distribution base image has use of other ids they're all based off of zero they're not choned into kind of the shifted range like what's happening today what we need for that to happen is a couple things one we need some upstream linux kernel support for basically a shifted view of a mount and so what that means is that we don't actually have to change the ownership on disk, but that there would be a driver when we mount your container's file system, it would know about the user namespace and shift your view of those files into the shifted ID space. And so when, when and if we get to that point, whether it's a, a capability on the overlay file system, whether it's something in the, in the Linux kernel proper, those discussions are happening upstream and we'll have to wait and see how that shakes out. But once it's available, the Docker engine will be able to basically have one set of cached layers of an image, and then you could Docker run containers even using different user namespaces and still share the same underlying content. So we're definitely hoping to see that work continue upstream, watching it and providing our requirements on that work and hope to apply the results of that once it's available in the Linux kernel. There are other changes happening upstream in the Linux kernel. Many have already happened to lessen some of the earlier restrictions we had when we first added this to the Docker engine. So for example, if you use Docker 1.10 or 1.11, uh, you couldn't use the dash dash read only flag when you had user namespaces enabled. This was a Linux kernel restriction related to how mount was happening inside a user namespace. That's now been corrected in most modern distribution kernels, at least 4.4 and above. I know that on Ubuntu 16.04 LTS, for example, you can now use the dash dash read only flag with user namespaces enabled and have both of those options work together. And so like that, we hope to see further restrictions go away to not complicate people's use of user namespaces and other features they were already relying on. Another set of restrictions that may not go away are things that the kernel community has deemed as sort of security violations were, the, were there to be the allowance for a user namespace to do these operations. For example, the, the mknod command to make a device node is not available when you're inside a user namespace. And so were you to have a container that needed to perform that operation, you would not be able to do so inside a user namespace. Another restriction is that many of you probably are aware that you can add and drop capabilities to a container, to a container process. 
some of those capabilities cannot be added to a process that's currently isolated in a user namespace. And this is a complex area, but you can read the manual page for the Linux uh, user namespaces information. And you can see that basically any capability that would affect sort of the global awareness of the entire kernel is not possible to be added to a user namespace process. So only resources that would be accessible inside the user namespace that's the only kind of capabilities you can add to a user namespace process. And we're trying to help make that documentation better so it's not so complicated to understand what you can and can't do. A few other things, using volumes can be complicated with user namespaces because again, we're using a different ID space than the host. And so we can look at an example of running a container, mounting a directory from my home directory, and show that I really need to either chone the directory in my path to match the user namespace, or change the permissions to be more broad to allow either file writes if I want that from within the container, or at least provide read access to a volume. And so again, there are some complexities around using volumes that are, at least today, not satisfied by anything other than some manual intervention to either set up volumes and prepare them to be used or to chone them to match the user namespace content of the container. So the good news is that, that many as people use this capability more, there's more work going on upstream to make it better streamlined, better accessible to users. And so we'll continue to track that in the Docker community in the Docker engine and, and the other layers of the engine. And hopefully you'll see some of these restrictions go away or at least will improve the user interface to allow you to use it in a way that isn't confusing or, or complex. So again, those are the sort of advanced topics around user namespaces. If you didn't get to see the first video, take a look about how just the basics of how to turn on, enable, and use user namespaces in the Docker engine. and Enjoy using these capabilities and we'll see how much we can improve it in the future. Thanks.